Welcome to Behind the Lens. Uh, today, we have someone who's fairly new behind the lens, and that's Andy Circus. Uh, thanks for coming, Andy. Hey, thank you. And it's really interesting to me, too, because um, I, I talk to a lot of directors, different points of view. It's very interesting to me to get to talk to you as an actor that everybody knows who's just made his first feature film as a director. And that would seem to be a, some, a natural progression for you. In fact, didn't you start out on the Hobbit series doing second unit directing, Absolutely. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was really fortunate. I mean, I, Peter Jackson knew I'd wanted to direct for a, a long time. So yeah. even going back to sort of Lord of the Rings days, I'd started to make short films. And then in between, uh, in between Lord of the Rings and King Kong, I directed my first film, my first short film. And then, and then I went back after King Kong, I started directing uh, video game projects, which were starting to, you know, use performance capture for real in, in oh. video games. Um, but then, but then he, he said, look, you know, will you come when you reprise your role of Gollum for The Hobbit? Will you, you know, I'd love you to be my second unit director. So it was a, it was like we shot for 200 days wow. um, over the course of a year and a half um, in serving his vision. And I, I just, you know, it was the most incredible education I could have had. <laughs> um, that was a different kind of uh, film than the one you've just done, Breathe. Yeah. But obviously, but but um, uh, what kind of things did you do as a second unit? I think a lot of people don't know what second unit director oh, sure. is. Oh, sure. Well, I mean, I mean, on that, because it was such a huge production, I mean, you know, it was like a full 150 crew. I did everything from from working with, with the actors, because there, there are so many characters in the, in the Hobbit trilogy, you know, all the dwarves, 12 dwarves, kind of the wizards and elves and orcs and all sorts, you know, so, so there was a lot of, you know, characters migrating from first to second unit and Pete wanted me there to to really manage the performance um, because because there was going to be such a lot of sharing um, but also I got I mean I learned I was we were shooting at 48 frames a second I, I was we were shooting native 3d um, it wow. was you know we're shooting huge I, I, I was 10 weeks in a helicopter doing aerials uh, <laughs> it was uh, you know everything from pickup shots to 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 you know scenes it was it was it was such a vast education it was amazing that's incredible that really prepares you for any kind of film certainly even Absolutely. these big giant studio movies mm -hmm. uh mm -hmm. today to do that with that kind of background sure. and peter jackson was a great teacher he really was amazing i mean I, i've always admired peter as a, as a as a director even before i worked with him um uh, I, I loved his film heavenly creatures and uh, i just you know for me i'd, I'd never really appreciated how much the camera can dance with an actor's performance, and and that film really, uh, for me, kind of solidified that notion that that you're you're so can be so totally in tune with with the camera supporting that performance, um, and I really that, that that's what I took away from from it really. Wow! So after um, Hobbit and all of that, how did this opportunity to do Breathe, which is the story of Robin Cavendish, who was struck down with polio essentially? at the age of 28 and paralyzed from the neck down. This is a very intimate human drama. So why was this the right uh, property for you to go? Well, uh, the backstory to it is, the genesis of the project is uh, Jonathan Cavendish, who is the young boy in the film, who is whose parents this story is about, is actually my business partner and co-founder of the Imaginarium Studios, oh. which, which was our business venture, um, setting up a performance capture studio with a production entity attached to it. So, so we, we, in the 2011, we came together, we have a, we have a studio, um, and it was really for furthering the art and craft of performance capture and, and building a slate of, of films for me to direct in that realm. Right. Um, but Jonathan had brought along other projects which are more traditional live action movies and one of these sort of scripts that were in our pile of scripts uh, was Breathe. And I took it home one night and I read it and I was so affected by it. It was emotionally so powerful. It was a real gut punch. Not, not because it was a sort of sentimental tale of disability but because it was so uplifting. It was this incredibly powerful, very moving but uplifting story. and. Um, I, I just went in the next day and I said to him, Jonathan, I, I, you know, I know we're focusing on me to, 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 we were developing Animal Farm, we were developing Jungle Book, and I, but I just said, I, I love this film and I, I really like, I know I'm more used to directing orcs and elves and dwarves <laughs> and animals of the jungle, but I'd love to do a film about your parents. Yeah. <laughs> and he, he, he said, um, absolutely, let's do it. So we started to develop it. And uh, the thing that I, I brought, I think, to the movie was, was, was the sense of, 
these people as mavericks, as pioneers, because that's what they were. They were, they were the first people to live, well, Robin was the first person to live outside of the hospital system with such severe disability on a, on a respirator machine. And these people became known as respinauts. So he was the first respinaut ever. Wow. And, um, but it was really about the, the love, the power of love, because it's an amazing love story, this yeah. film. And, um, and, and so, so, but it was the, the pioneering aspect that really, this sort of Heath Robinson kind of approach to living life two minutes away from death, because if the respirator had broken down ever, he would, he would literally die within two minutes. So, yeah. so the intensity of their life um, was was literally um, gave them this in, made them live this incredibly fulfilled, vibrant, very humorous. Uh, their response to this tragedy was 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 with great humor and wit, and that's what I really love. But I, I really thought there's a moment in the film, for instance, where Diana says to him, "He's he's been he's had polio for some months. He's in the Oxford Hospital, trans, so tra been transferred from Africa to Oxford Hospital, and he's in a big depression." And she says. How can I make life better for you? And he says, get me out of hospital. At that moment, for me, it was like saying, put me on the moon. You know, what they were trying to achieve was absolutely extraordinary. Ordinary people yeah. doing this extraordinary thing. I mean, that, that, that's what I loved about it. And then Robin becoming, you know, building this wheelchair with, with a respirator attached to it, with his, with his ex, um, inventor friend, Teddy Hall, and then, um, and then becoming more mobile with a, with, you know, get it, finding a van that they could build a hydraulic lift on the back of. And then once, once they got back on track and their lives were mobile, they were there, then able to, to focus on, on other people that were in his situation and, and bring, bring a sense of, of you know, truly living back to, to these people who were otherwise would have just been in hospital in a waiting room for death. And, and I really responded to that notion of, of, uh, of, of being pioneers. How do you feel? Much better. Diana, what happens if there's a power cut? You work it with a hand pump. It's a nifty bit of kit. <laughs> look who's here. Oh, look. There you go. Oh. Look, Jonathan. It's Daddy. And what about uh, working with a first-time feature director here like that for these actors? Uh, what was that relationship like for you? Well, well the, I, think, I think they trusted me because, because on the whole, I think actors working with actor directors, you know, we all speak the same language. We understand the nature of performance and we understand that, you know, as an actor, I know that I, I, I need to feel that, I, that I'm generating this character, that, I'm, that, I, have, that I truly own this character. And so I'm aware as an actor director that, that that's, and I respect that that's what the actors need. And so it's all about creating the atmosphere where they feel supported and that they are, their contribution is, you know, and their choices are, are valued. And then, of course, you, you know, as a director, you need to shape the scene because, because you're in charge of the, viewing the whole. Um, and, and then just very carefully suggesting without, without prescribing is, is, is what us <laughs> actors need, basically. <laughs> <laughs> now, let me ask you, because you also, even though this is your first film that's being released, you actually did The Jungle Book. Not The Jungle Book that was released a couple of years ago, no, but no. Your own version of the Jungle Book, you actually play Baloo in it. That's right. right? That's yeah. right. Yeah. So this is more in the other wheelhouse. Exactly. This is sort of going back <laughs> to why we set the Imaginarium up, and uh, and this is a very. I mean, it's a. It's it's now uh, more than likely going to be called Mowgli Tales from the Jungle Book because it's a very uh, Mowgli centric story. It's about identity. It's uh, Mowgli is this this feral child. He's 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 he is other um, brought up. Uh, in the world of animals, but but actually is neither truly at home in the world of animals nor the world of man. And the story is really about his his growing uh, awareness and, and and finding his true identity. And it's brilliantly portrayed by this young actor called Rowan Chand, who who is uh, you know is an extraordinary young actor. It's a pretty much an adult role played by a mm -hmm. child. And. And then, the, then all of the animals in our version of Jungle Book are performance captured, so in the same way that we created uh, apes 
and uh, yeah. and uh, and many of the other characters that I've played. So we have one, a wonderful cast. We have Christian Bale playing Bagheera the Panther and uh, Kate Blanchett playing Car the Snake and Benedict Cumberbatch playing Shere Khan the Tiger. Wow. And Naomi Harris, you know, she's playing the Wolf Mother Nisha. And 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 so we had we had this extraordinary and and I actually so I shot all of the principal photography um, with all of these guys and, uh, and and young Rowan in South Africa and and on stage at Leaves and Studios in England. Um, and then, in this sort of hiatus period in post-production, because uh, we were trying to refine our facial capture pipeline and, and uh, you know, the animation was coming through, there was this window of opportunity to shoot Breathe um, <laughs> whilst making, you know, finishing well, Jungle Book. Into Jungle Book. <laughs> so that's, so, and this one's come out first, so Breathe sort of jumped the line, and, and because it's a much smaller <laughs> film, Got a wow! Of so, Talk about a challenge for a first-time feature film director <laughs> to do two movies at I once. Know, essentially, I know. it's amazing how it's all worked. I don't think out anybody's out. done that. Not well, even Coppola. <laughs> <laughs> there were well, there were some crazy times earlier on in the year where I was literally going from one edit suite to the other, like for for you know months at a time. So it's, it's, it, it was interesting. Does this inspire you to just concentrate more on directing, keep going in the directing direction, or do you want to mix it up with the uh, acting? Here? It, 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 there are certainly, I mean, I have a number of films that I want to make, and um, and then within that, uh, if, if great scripts come along with, with uh, you know, really interesting roles, I, I'm certainly not going to turn those down. So it's, it is mixing them. I love doing both, and I, I certainly, I'm not saying, not saying I'm giving up acting for a second, because there's so much I want to do more. I'd actually like to go back on stage as well, because I haven't done any theatre for 15 years. You have now completed the trilogy of The Planet of the Apes, with just this amazing epic film, War for the Planet of the Apes, there's lots of awards buzz again, as there seems to be every year at this time. So I, it begs the question for me to ask, when do you think actors, uh, voting actors and people in the, the awards game are going to take these performances like they do, like other acting roles, you know? Well, I, I really do hope, I mean, and not just for my own sake, but for, for the future of the understanding of performance capture, that it, it happens soon. Because, and, uh, you know, there are plenty of other great performances in Planet of the Apes. Karen Carnival, who plays Maurice, Steve Zahn, who plays Bad Ape. They, you know, and there are more actors doing other films, like Mark Rylance playing the BFG, you know, right. the big, big Friendly Giant. Um, Tom Hardy's now doing a Marvel film where he's playing a, a character using performance capture. That, you know, as I say, the, the Jungle Book is full of great actors. And these these guys are doing it because they they, they understand that the, that it's acting is acting, and performance capture is a way of creating a role where instead of putting on costume and makeup and going on set and working with your fellow actor and the director. You're, you're, you're doing exactly the same process. You're going onto set, working with your fellow actor directed by a director, and then you're having the, the, the digital costume and makeup applied afterwards. So the actual process of, of all of the acting choices that you make, the, the building of the character, the psychology, the emotion of the character, everything else about creating a role is identical. There is no difference. And, you know, you're, I think people in the past have thought, oh, well, you know, it's some sort of CG magic, a bit, little bit like, I always liken it to, um, you know, drug-assisted sport, yeah. you know, you know, <laughs> where, you know um, where, where you get a little bit of an extra helping hand um, uh, for, for, from some mysterious source, <laughs> yeah. you know, but, uh, but it's not the way. Uh, it's yeah. the acting, you're authoring that role and that your performance, as, you, as you, you've seen the footage, yeah. you know, when you see the side-by-sides, yeah. it's that performance is put into the cut of the movie and the director lives with that cut for, 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 for months and months and months and then the job of the visual effects team and the animators is to emulate that to the to the and be and give great fidelity to that performance that has been created on set with the other actors. So, so that that is the the, the, the um, you know that that's the as long as the education reaches these people and people fully understand, then it just becomes about you know well just treat it as a performance. Yeah, well, it's definitely part of the future of acting and directing and everything else you're doing. So behind the lens, in front of the lens, I always look forward to seeing what Andy Circus is gonna do next. Thank thanks you. so much for joining us oh, today. Oh, thanks Pete. Thanks. Thanks.